Um, so we're going to do some stalking. Um, inspired by a recent walk down to Chichester Harbour to Codna and seeing the little egrets behaving in a very strange way. Usually they're solitary, but these were gathering in small groups and I, I understand that happens when they're breeding. Anyway, before we start the formal exercise, if I just take that camera down to my feet, we'll just think about the intention behind the exercise, which is to move carefully, really feeling the earth, but without causing too much disturbance around us. So the image of the stalk is that you're standing in shallow water and you're just shifting your weight from one foot to the other. One foot comes up trying not to disturb the water, not to scare the fish. It just touches and a little step out, pushing your foot down through the shallow water onto the bed of the whatever, Chichester Harbour, without creating ripples. And then we change sides, lifting, just touching, and very gently carefully, mindfully changing feet, not creating ripples. Um, a little bit of um, knowledge sometimes interferes with imagination. Um, when I was trying to find out a bit more about little egret's behavior, I discovered that actually when they lift their feet and place their feet in the water, they don't do it very carefully so as not to frighten the fishes. They actually deliberately wiggle their feet to stir up the silt at the bottom of the, the, the water they're standing on and reveal their food. But we have to let a bit of poetic license get into our movement. We're not going to disturb the silt. All right. So on that basis, I'll turn my back on you, which is always quite an element of trust that the tripod won't collapse and that you won't suddenly freeze. So turning my back, you need about six feet in front of you, but most of this movement is from one side to the other. So you don't need to move forwards too far. Feet under the shoulders. Starting in the Wu Chi position. So feel the bed of the stream of the inlet that's under your feet. Allow the sky hook to lift you and lighten you. Arms just hang. Soft breathing in the belly. Again, that breathing in the belly keeps our center of gravity low. It makes balancing much more of an ease rather than an effort. So the hands on either side, now your wings just open and the palms come to rest on the belly. And for the sake of this movement, let's all do the same thing. So I can say shift your weight over onto the right foot. Keep a sense of lightness, even though the weight is on the right foot. The sky hook is still keeping you extended, light, elegant, poised. And that left foot just on its toe comes up, just touches the water near your supporting foot and takes a small step. Not too big a step. It's difficult to keep your balance and keep your roots. So all your weight goes forwards onto the front foot. Arms extend down in line with the spine, in line with the back foot. Fingers spread. Keeping the heel of the back foot firmly planted on the ground. And then the sky hook draws you back. Everything goes soft. 
the spine hangs, weight on the back leg, arms, wings, just hanging loose. But that front foot, not weight bearing, but still connected to the bed underneath the water. Skyhook brings you forwards, fingers spread, all the weight on the front foot. And then to change sides, you come back, front foot comes up onto its heel, you gather, swivel round, shift your weight, and again, just touch the water near your supporting foot and a small step out. And just let the sky hook draw your weight forwards on to, over that front foot. Fingers spread. Breathe in, all the weight comes back. Whole body just soft and hanging. Breathe out, all the weight goes forwards, fingers spread. Breathe in, gather, front foot on its heel, swivels round, step out to the left. Breathe out. Breathe in. Everything softens and hangs over the back foot. Breathe out. Fingers spread. Breathe in. Gather. Front foot on its heel. Swivels round. Step out to the right. Breathe out. Breathe in. Chi drops down. Breathe out. Chi drawn up. Breathe in and gather. Front foot on its heel. Swivels. Step out to the left. Breathe out. Breathe in. Just letting the arms hang. Breathe out. All the weight forwards, breathe in, gather, front foot swivels on its heel, step out to the right, breathe out. All the weight comes back as you breathe in, arms just hang. Breathe out as you're drawn forwards, breathe in and gather, front foot on its heel, swivels, step out to the left for the last time, breathe out, breathe in, everything hangs soft, breathe out, fingers spread, breathe in and gather, front foot on its heel, swivels round, Step out to the right for the last time. Breathe out. And breathe in. Arms just hang. Breathe out. Fingers spread. And this time, to finish the movement as you breathe in and gather, the front foot comes up onto its heel, but both feet swivel to bring you back into that shoulder width stance. Hands resting on the belly. Reconnecting with the sky, making sure the body is light, extended. Soft breathing in the belly. And then to finish this movement, oh, I think we'll just lift that up a little bit more. Finishing the movement, it's that archetypal movement at the end of many Qigong movements where the hands make a small circle and in effect it's just saying we finished. That's lovely. Just letting the arms hang, soft breathing in the belly. No longer a stalk, or a heron, or a crane, or an egret, 
or even some of you extroverts out there might have been a flamingo. Back to being a human. Have a little shake. It's a very formal exercise and the more formal, you need a little jiggle afterwards. That's good. So, I'd like to do two of the Bud One Gin exercises that we don't do very often. One is a ritualized punch. And it's similar in intention to drawing a bow. We're drawing our energy out to a distant goal, a distant aim. We're not going to be pugnacious, but we're using the movement of the punch to allow our chi to go out beyond our reach. But we also have to make sure it comes back. Now, I think if I come, you don't need to see my feet much for this, but if I come a bit closer and turn sideways on, yeah, I think that would, would work quite nicely. Then you can see the movement a little bit more clearly. Oh, no, it's too attractive outside, looking out of the window. That rain is too nice, we'll face that way. So, feet are under the hips, and part of the intention when you're going into the stretch of the, uh, the punch, there is a sort of almost psychotic zealot energy. So none of this soft gaze energy. The eyes are bright, sparkling, intent on where you're directing your chi. But when you relax, the eyes soften again. So, feet are quite narrow under the shoulders. And the palms come up, and then you create a qigong fist. So qigong fist is when the knuckle of the thumb sticks out. So not like a conventional punch. I haven't punched anyone for years, but in fact, I don't think I ever punched anyone. Didn't know what a punch really was. But the knuckle of the thumb sticks out, and hopefully there's not so much rust in your thumb that you can't squeeze. There we are. So it's that sort of movement. So, palms face up, qigong fist closing the fingers over the first joint of the thumb, and then you pull both fists back as you drop down. So the knees bend. It's quite nice to experiment with that movement. As you pull the elbows back, you can't help but drop into a more powerful position. That's it. Lovely. Now, one hand begins to be drawn forwards like a very slow, stylized punch. As it's drawn forwards, the hand just has to roll over. So the knuckles point up, and there's a certain point where you can't go forwards anymore. And then the other hand pulls back, so the shoulders rotate, allowing that punch to reach out to the horizon. In this position, the eyes are bright, wide, excited. You're extending your chi towards a goal. And then breathe in, the extended fist comes back, the other fist begins to go forwards, they roll round each other in that midpoint and reach out. And again, let the shoulders rotate to allow that arm to reach out further. Eyes bright, letting your gaze go out over the knuckles of your fist, out to that distant horizon. Breathe in. Eyes soften. Chi comes back to your, your core. Hands rotate round. Breathe out pushing forwards, but this hand that's coming back to the waist pulls back to allow that forward arm to go further forwards. And breathe in. Face soft as the hands rotate past each other. Eyes bright as you drop down. You're still letting the spine be soft, the shoulders are rotating, you're not leaning forwards and losing your roots, 
you're still hanging, breathing. Fists rotate past each other and breathe out. Eyes wide, excited. And breathe in, gaze softens. Fists rotate past each other, breathe out. Out breath allows your chi to be extended and breathe in. This is the last movement. Eyes wide, excited as you breathe out, letting that chi extend out to the horizon. And so easy to forget that it's a combined movement, pulling back to allow that front arm to go forwards. And this time, breathe in, come back to the center, the fists open, and just pause with the palms facing up. Widen your stance back to shoulder width stance. Reconnect with the soles of your feet, receiving that support from the earth. Reconnect with the sky hook, lightening, extending. Soft breathing, taking your awareness of the breath down to the belly. And once the awareness is in the belly, breathing in, recharging, breathing out, releasing, we again make that small circle of the hands. We finished. And let the hands hang. Another couple of soft breaths in the belly. Again, always soft, not breathing so deeply, the belly becomes tight and tense. And then have a little wriggle and a jiggle. Ah, oh, good. Oh, oh. Um, although it's not necessarily a pugnacious movement, one that sort of makes you want to have a fight, if you're feeling a bit frustrated, if someone just hasn't been listening to you and you sort of leave a room thinking, oh, for goodness sake, that ritualized punch is a good way of just really helping the chi begin to flow a little bit more freely. Ah, oh. and let's come back to the center. Wu Chi position. So gathering chi from all directions, I'll move further back so that you can see the lower part of my body and the upper part. But again, you need good space around you so you're not going to clip or have to restrict where your hand goes. And again, if you get lost, the intention is simply reaching out and asking any of your chi that's out there that's not in the reservoir to come back home. You're not getting into a fight with it. So there may be some chi out there with something you really care for or a situation that's really difficult where it's not ready to come back, but give it the opportunity. And it may be that during the movement, your mind goes to a particular place and you just want to pause in the movement and giving that chi just a little bit of time to come back if it wants to. All right. So, I shall turn my back on you. Let's just make sure as much of me is available as possible. That's it. Too far to the back of this room and I clip my fingers on things and sideways. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I think turning my back is easier because then you don't have to mirror what I'm doing. Feet as wide apart as you feel comfortable. Hands make a gathering movement and come to rest, one hand on the other on the belly. And for the sake of us all moving in the same way, place your left hand on your right hand. So when you turn your hand so the palm is facing upright, 
the left hand is underneath your right. And that left hand is going to scoop chi up from the earth, bring it back to the belly, and then the hand slides around your waist. And it's at this point where I turn my background. I can just have a quick glimpse at all of you. Now that upturned palm only is as upright as your body enables. Reach back, reach to your left, reach in front. Don't force the body into a position that causes discomfort. Reaching above, back to your left, in front, and the movement finishes with that upturned hand, that upturned palm, just touching the crook of your right elbow. That's good. Like a collecting plate, you're reaching out and inviting your chi to come home. Unwinding, reaching to the left, above, Behind, and that collecting plate touches the small of the back, slides round the waist, and your left hand now rests on the palm of your right hand. So your right hand is able to scoop chi up from the earth, bring it back to the belly and just slide round the waist. Again, out of the corner of my eye, I'm just looking to check that you're all okay. Reaching backwards, sideways, in front, just in the space, in the moment, you're gathering the chi from around you in this space, in this time. Collecting plate touches the crook of the left elbow, reaches forwards, unwinds. Collecting plate touches the small of the back, slides round the waist, and now your right hand is resting on your left hand. So that first two movements, one to the left, one to the right, is about being here, being now, just collecting the chi that surrounds you. The next two movements, we can move in time and space. So that left hand is underneath the right, you scoop chi up from the earth, bring it back to the belly, slide round the waist, and just reaching out, beyond wherever you are in space, situations, people, bringing back the chi that powers the emotion connected with a time or a place or a situation. Collecting plate touches the crook of your right elbow, unwind. not denying an emotion or a feeling, simply bringing back the fuel that powers it. Letting the hand slide round the waist, left hand on right, right hand now scoops chi up from the earth, slides round the waist. And where can you reach to? Where does that arm extend to beyond the walls of the space you're in, beyond the time of the moment you're in? Backwards to past events, plate touches the crook of your left elbow, unwind. Forwards to imagined, planned events. Plate touches the small of your back, slides round the waist. Right hand rests on left. We're going to do the same movement to the left and the right again, traveling in space and time, letting our reach go beyond 
this moment go beyond this space. Letting the plate rest at the crook of the right elbow, unwinding. Letting the plate rest at the small of the back, slide round the waist, left hand on right. Right hand scoops chi up from the earth. <sighs> Reaching out. Collecting plate touches the crook of the left elbow, unwind. Collecting plate touches the small of the back, slides round the waist. Right hand resting on left. Now the last two movements, we're back in this space, in this moment. Not going somewhere else, not traveling simply here. So reaching down, collecting chi from the earth, bringing it back to the belly. Just taking that upturned palm around the body, inviting any chi that happens to be loitering around us to come back home. Plate touches the crook of the right elbow, Unwind. Plate touches the small of the back, slides round the waist, left hand on right, right hand, last movement, scoops chi up from the earth. And just invites the chi around you to come back home. Collecting plate touches the small of the back, unwinds. Collecting plate touches the small of the back, slides round the waist, right hand on left. Bring the feet back under the shoulders, just keeping those palms up. It's like you're just gently cradling the chi that you've been collecting. And then to close the form, that closing the cupboard doors maneuver. So the arms just reaching out, tucking the chi up in the storehouse, keeping it safe, but available not locked up, hands just relax, soft breathing in the belly, sky hook keeping you light, extended, and my breath particularly seems to be right up in the, be in the chest, so I'm having to just put a little bit more effort into helping the chi be in the belly. Breathing in, recharging, breathing out, releasing. And as always, just a little jiggle, not really stirring things up, but just a little bit of a, oh, that's good. 